And I will say they really didn't do him any favors in the makeup chair. Uh, they somehow managed to make him look like he just got his first pimple, and he's a two-time divorcee with three kids at the same time. Which, I, I guess in itself, is a success for your makeup team. <laughs> I'm Mark Daniel Patrick. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. Let's get right into some comment shoutouts from last week's video, which was The Book of Mormon, Kelly Marie Tran, and Miscast21. If you haven't seen that video, I'll throw that up top. Please go watch that one as well. All right, our first comment comes to us from Jill, who says, show us your Canadian heart in your next video by commenting on the Montreal Canadiens and the Toronto Maple Leafs meeting in the NHL playoffs for the first time since 1979. Bonus points if you can do it in song. What would a musical about the NHL be like? Love from Minnesota. Well, Jill, I'm going to have to disappoint you on two fronts. One, I have no idea what a musical about the NHL would be like. Uh, and two, I'm really not that much of a hockey person. I'm really just more of a, a, a casual fan. Although, you know, I do have to say that, having said that, I will say that Carey Price has been absolutely standing on his head in this series, and he is by far the best goaltender on the planet. Where the team in front of him seems to have forgotten that they're not on a soccer pitch and one goal a game isn't going to be a blowout. And you asked me about the forever rivals, and I've got to say, it seems like the NHL right now is tired of the Toronto Maple Leafs being the forever losers. Because the calls in this series are an absolute joke. But you know, as a diehard Habs fan, if they're not able to come back in this series, I'm going to be okay with the fact that every 54 years, we're going to lose a playoff series to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Moving on. Our next comment comes to us from Lawrence, who says, Oh, I got emotional at the Dear Evan Hansen trailer, but that emotion was repulsion. Come on, he's too freaking old to play a role alongside 15-year-olds. It's creepy. He goes on to mention Grease, uh, Beverly Hills 90210, and Riverdale. Yeah, Ben Platt in this role in 2021 on screen is wrong and is solely an ego trip on his behalf. Yes, I know it's his role and he should have been... And then they did it at co-stars. His father is the producer. Yeah, okay. Uh, shame on you, Ben. Well, Lawrence, thank you for setting up our video today, and I'm going to get to some of your comments here uh, a little later on in the video. Look, for a musical not named Hamilton, this has been the biggest thing to hit the Broadway stage in the past four or five years. Now, Dear Evan Hansen has just been a monumental success, not only in the musical theater world, but all over the globe. There are so many fans who are just drawn to its, its music, its story, and its heart. And while I cannot wait for this film to be released in September, the only thing anyone seems to be able to talk about right now is this casting choice. So I thought I would count down the five things I'm looking forward to about this film, and of course I'll try and get through the first four as fast as I can because we know the number one is going to be this right here. So these are the top five reasons why I cannot wait for Dear Evan Hansen. All right, number five for me has got to be the release date, which is September 24th, and that's just two days after my birthday. And I can't think of a better birthday gift and a better way to spend my 16th birthday. If Ben can do it. And number four is Pasek and Paul, who are hands down the best writing duo of the past 10 years, uh, winning an Oscar for La La Land, nominated and probably should have won for This Is Me and The Greatest Showman. They picked up writing credits on the new live adaptation of Aladdin in 2019, and now 2021 with Dear Evan Hansen. And as if this musical score couldn't get any better, the film is set to debut two new songs that they've written specifically for the film. Number three for me is Amy Adams, who is quickly becoming the female version of William H. Macy, where she's just showing up in everything that's ever made, ever. Now what I love about Amy is her musical theater roots. She performed dinner theater in Colorado and appeared in shows like Anything Goes and A Chorus Line. And although her role in this film isn't really all that musical, it's still a nod to her musical theater days and you know she could throw down and give you a cover of Waving Through a Window if she really had to. And number two is obviously Julianne Moore. I mean, for this movie to land two of the biggest actresses in our generation, in Amy Adams and Julianne Moore, truly speaks to the story and the importance of the message behind this film. I mean, Julianne has always been one of my favorites, giving some unforgettable performances in, in Children of Men, A Single Man, and of course her Oscar win for Still Alice. And obviously our number one reason that we cannot wait for this film is none other than Ben Platt. And honestly, I love the debate. I really do. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, Ben Platt is 27 years old, and he's been cast to play a 16-year-old in this film. Not the first time it's been done, by the way. 
And I will say they really didn't do him any favors in the makeup chair. Uh, they somehow managed to make him look like he just got his first pimple, and he's a two-time divorcee with three kids at the same time. Which, I, I guess in itself, is a success for your makeup team. And like I said, this has been done so many times before. I mean, let's not forget the late Corey Monteith was also 27 years old when he was cast to play a high schooler in Glee. And for the most part, we all just kind of went along with it. It's honestly just unfortunate that everything has to be a thing these days. You know, and right or wrong, this is just what Ben and the film have to go through right now. What really makes me laugh, though, is there might not be another art form on the planet that bends the bar of reality more than musical theater. And if that's the case and we can all agree on it, then what the fuck are we complaining about? Oh, hey, look, that, that guy was talking and now he's all of a sudden spontaneously singing. Oh I, oh, I don't think she, she hears this part of the song, because she's sitting right next to him, but isn't acknowledging anything he's singing right now. Oh, hey, look! Everyone in the restaurant is suddenly wearing matching sequenced outfits. Oh, hey, look! Everyone in the restaurant is now up performing a five-minute perfectly choreographed dance number while singing in perfect four-part harmony. Oh, look. That guy's way too old to be playing a high schooler. God, you know, why does this stuff have to be so unrealistic? That's all the time we have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave me a comment below of what you thought of this video and what you'd like to see in the future. Until next time, I'm Mark Daniel Patrick, and thanks so much for watching.